reprehensible in certain ways. Governor Romney, a year ago it seemed that you couldn't wait to tell the world about your health care experiment in Massachusetts. Since then it's been criticized by conservatives as something Hillary Clinton could have devised. You hardly mention it on your website. What's changed? I love it. It's a fabulous program. I'm delighted with the fact that we in our state work together across the aisle, Republicans and Democrats, to find a way to get health care for all of our citizens that's affordable and that's portable. Now, I know there's some people that don't like it, but when it came time to vote, you know, we won 198 to 2. The Heritage Foundation worked on it with us. We had people on both sides of the aisle. Now, I know there's some people who wonder about it. Senator Kennedy, at the signing of the bill, we were all there together. He said, you know, if you got Mitt Romney and Ted Kennedy agreeing to the same bill, it means one thing. One of us didn't read it, but I helped write it. And I knew it well. And this is a country that can get all of our people insured with not a government takeover, without Hillary care, without socialized medicine. Instead, get the market to do its job. Let people have health care that they can afford. Get the market to do its job. Let people have the opportunity to choose policies in the private sector. We didn't expand government programs. We didn't raise taxes. There was no government takeover. The market can work to solve our health care needs. And that's the great exciting news. And 27 other states are working on health care reform right now. It's a great program, a great opportunity for the entire country. John? Senator McCain, some of your colleagues have been hit pretty hard on flip-flops, but you now support extending President Bush's uh, tax cuts, but you originally voted against them. That makes no sense. Because in the proposal that I had, there were significant tax cuts, and the thing that bothered me was that there was no provision to start addressing Social Security or a contingency. We had a contingency called the Iraq War, and we had no restraint on spending. And spending got completely out of control. Yes, these tax cuts need to be made permanent, otherwise they'll have the effect of a tax increase. But spending is destroying the future of this country, and we've got to get it under control. And as I started to say before, the first pork barrel earmark bill that crosses my desk as President of the United States, I'm going to veto it, and I'm going to make the authors of it famous. Okay, let's start with a, uh, an enjoyable down the line, okay? Here, here. I want each uh, candidate to mention a tax he'd like to cut in addition to the Bush tax cuts, keeping them in effect. Governor. I'd like middle-income Americans to be able to save their money and not have to pay any tax at all on interest, <laughs> dividends, or capital gains. And by the way, we're all talking a about... zero rate on capital. Zero rate on capital gains for middle-income Americans. And by the way, we're all talking about how anxious we are to veto overspending. <laughs> I was a governor. I've done it hundreds of times. I can't wait to get my hands on Washington's budget. Senator. I'd put forward an alternative flat tax and allow people to choose between the current tax code and system, which doesn't work, which ought to be taken behind the barn and killed with a dull axe, and an alternate flat tax and let them choose. Governor Gilmore, a tax you'd like to cut. You know, Chris, uh, I've been a governor of Virginia. I ran on a tax cut proposal. I ran on eliminating a car tax in Virginia. I received terrific opposition to doing that. I kept my word, kept my promise, and we eliminated that car tax. Now, the question is, who is actually going to do what they say they're going to do? Where you have been is where you're going to go. And I have actually lived up to my word. And the answer is the alternative minimum tax, which is continuing to drive people in the middle class into higher and higher taxes. Governor, Governor Huckabee. Well, I cut taxes 94 times as governor, but I, I realized tinkering with it doesn't work. I'd overhaul it. I would work for the fair tax, which meets the four criteria, flatter, fair, finite, family-friendly. We'd get rid of the IRS. We'd get rid of all capital gains, income, corporate, and we'd have a consumption tax. The fair tax proposal, I believe, offers the best opportunity for all levels of America. Congressman, your turn. Uh, absolutely. Uh, uh, Chris, uh, you know, right now, our manufacturers are getting killed. Uh, we're seeing manufacturing move offshore because a dumb trade deal that we signed with the rest of the world allows all of our exports to be taxed twice while their exports to us are not taxed at all. The only way that we can even come close to leveling that playing field is to eliminate manufacturing taxes. So eliminate all taxes on Americans who will stay in the United States and make products and hire American workers. Governor. Thank you very much. I am I'm excited about this question because I was governor of Wisconsin and vetoed 1,900 items. 1,900 times, reduced taxes $16.4 billion. I think the biggest problem we got in America is the alternative minimum tax that's bringing more middle income people in. Let's put it in, let's have the people have a flat tax and have the option of paying whichever is least.